Hi guys, welcome to this video on reducing alcohol consumption. We're going to talk about the impact of alcohol consumption, what does alcohol actually do to the body, what are some of the health risks as well as some of the benefits and also we're going to think a little bit about how we might go about reducing our overall consumption if that's something we need to consider. Let's get started. So what are the impacts of alcohol consumption? So let's think about both short term impacts and then later on a little bit more about the longer term health impacts. So the first thing we need to discuss really is what does alcohol do? What does it do? Well, alcohol is a type of drug that we refer to as a depressant. It's a depressant. And the word depressant simply means it indicates to us what happens when we consume that drug to our central nervous system. So a depressant is a drug that dampens the work of the central nervous system. And alcohol is a depressant. So alcohol, therefore, dampens the work of your central nervous system. What it, what it means really is that it reduces brain function. So your thinking becomes cloudy. Your thinking becomes less clear. Your cognition uh, suffers and also neural activity so the links between the brain and the rest of the body become affected and that has then a knock-on effect to things like slurring your words blurred vision loss of coordination and that sort of thing so obviously this depends on um, kind of body size previous experience with alcohol and so on but the same kinds of things will be true of everyone um, but perhaps at different thresholds of total overall intake also, of course, in the short term, one of the impacts of excessive alcohol consumption is that it may lead to a hangover, um, which can be um, uh, as have been linked to stress and anxiety uh, if it's something that occurs regularly, especially if it impacts your social life or your professional life. Um, waking up in the morning and uh, with a hangover and having to go to work and that sort of thing can be very stressful and obviously problematic. Um, I'm sure your boss wouldn't be too pleased with you. Um, and then also if we're consuming over about, according to the NHS in the UK, over about 12 units of alcohol uh, in a single session, which is a, a roughly equivalent to about six pints uh, of, of medium strength beer, um, if we consume over about those 12 units, we're also at risk of something called alcohol poisoning. And alcohol poisoning is um, or potentially has the impact where it inhibits our breathing. It interferes with the with the heartbeat. It interferes with the heart rate. It becomes irregular. The, the beating pattern potentially can come become irregular. And also it, it inhibits our gag reflex as well which affects sometimes the uh, ability to breathe effectively um, it might cause us to vomit and that sort of thing as well so alcohol poisoning has lots of uh, pretty negative and pretty significantly negative uh, impacts as well so alcohol poisoning is certainly something that you would want to avoid however are there any benefits to the consumption of alcohol well there there could well be it depends on who you ask but are there any benefits? So I'm going to I'm going to give you two um, lower levels of alcohol consumption. So well below the levels of alcohol poisoning, of course, um, and below the levels of where you get to the point where you're slurring words and so on. At, at, at lower levels, alcohol can actually produce a sense of calmness, relaxation, a feeling of well-being. And this is due to the release of uh, dopamine uh, in the brain which causes us to experience these kinds of feelings now what can sometimes happen is when you when you begin to drink at low levels that sense of relaxation that that comes about from the dopamine release we kind of chase it by drinking more alcohol but actually that's not how it works continuing to drink further actually doesn't relate or doesn't correlate to an increased release of dopamine OK, it doesn't have that effect. It's not just a, a, um, a, a direct relationship. The more that you drink, the happier you'll feel. That's not how it works. But at low levels, there is a link between the two. Another positive potential benefit is that some types of alcohol, particularly, for example, red wine, um, uh, have been shown or are really suggested to show a positive impact on immune system function. Um, again, provided that we're talking about relatively moderate levels of intake. So it might be that red wine and some beers um, might have a positive impact on uh, your immune system's ability to fight off diseases. That again, similar to the calmness and relaxation, that disappears if you 
go well beyond moderate intake. Those benefits actually uh, invert essentially and you lose those benefits if you try and sort of chase immune system benefits by drinking more and more alcohol. It actually does the opposite effect after a while. Okay, so what are some of the associated health risks with drinking alcohol? So these are the kinds of risks you can expect uh, to face if you're drinking, consuming a large amount of alcohol. And the UK guidelines suggest that 14 units of alcohol per week should be the upper limit. So if you exceed that on a regular basis, what kinds of health risks are there? Well, there are several. One would be the risk of stroke. Now, alcohol can cause uh, numerous conditions that will then have a knock on impact to give you a greater risk of stroke. Um, things like increasing your uh, blood pressure, um, increasing uh, levels of obesity. And also, as we've mentioned in the previous um, slide, um, atrial fibr fibrillation, which is this idea of this irregular heartbeat. All of those things can have a knock on impact. They come from excessive consumption of alcohol, but they can have a knock on impact to putting you at risk of stroke. Um, secondly, then cirrhosis, cirrhosis of the liver. This is essentially um, cirrhosis is a late stage of scarring or what's called fibrosis of the liver, um, which is it can be caused by other diseases like hepatitis, but it also can be caused by chronic alcoholism. So drinking regularly and consistently above the guidance um, amounts um, and it is something that can't be undone. So once that liver tissue is scarred, it can't become unscarred. And so the best chance that you've got really is to not let it get scarred in the first place or as soon as you catch it, uh, to catch it early and to stop, um, to stop drinking heavily. Because, like I say, um, scarring of the liver cannot be reversed. It can't be undone. So we've got stroke, we've got cirrhosis, we've also got hypertension. So this is the idea that our blood pressure over time will increase and that's also linked to coronary heart disease. Um, it's suggested maybe having more than three drinks in a single sitting. That temporarily raises your blood pressure, um, but the body, provided you don't do that too often, the body can cope with that. But if you repeatedly binge drink, then that can lead to long-term sustained increases in blood pressure, which we would refer to then as hypertension. Fourthly, then there's depression. Um, and alcohol, as we know, affects, as we've just been discussing, it does affect the chemistry of the brain. Unfortunately, when alcohol is consumed in large quantities, it can affect the brain in negative ways and actually increase the risk of depression. And things like hangovers that are linked uh, to excessive alcohol consumption, they can create a cycle. Um, perhaps you wake up feeling ill and anxious. Um, and then that's going to potentially, again, not for definite, but potentially have negative impacts on personal relationships, working relationships and so on. Finally, then there's this idea of a weakened immune system. So whereas we've already said that very small, um, moderate levels of certain kinds of alcohol can potentially have some positive impact on the on the immune system. Um, generally speaking, excessive, prolonged consumption of most types of alcohol actually will uh, weaken the immune system. So how do we actually go about reducing our alcohol consumption and what can we do? What are kind of some of the, the practical things that we can do? Well, I'm going to split this into two uh, subheadings. First heading is really how can we just reduce intake? Um, so that's if you just want to get your intake down to uh, moderate levels, you're not interested in cutting out entirely and also you're not at risk of, of alcoholism. Um, so just some simple strategies for reducing intake. One would be to replace. And that is if you're if you're going out or you're having some um, some drinks with friends, maybe make one of those drinks, replace it with a non-alcoholic beer or a soft drink or even some water would probably be best. Could you switch one and replace one of those drinks for another drink that isn't alcoholic? It doesn't have to. You don't have to replace them all. You can just switch one. Another strategy would be to space the drinking out. So that would be to spread the drinking over several sessions rather than all in one go. So we've already said that the UK guidance is for 14 units per week. You would not want to drink all 14 units in one go. You'd want to space them out. And ideally, again, the government in the UK suggests over three days. 
So rather than binge drinking, you could spread them out. And w one good way of doing that is to plan in in your in your uh, diary to have some specifically alcohol free days. Maybe plan in three days where you're definitely not going to have any alcohol at all. That might help you space things out. Maybe have a um, a Tuesday and a Wednesday and a Friday, for example, where you're definitely not going to have any alcohol or whatever. It, it depends on your schedule. So we've got replace, we've got space, and then also pace. When you are drinking within a session, within a single session, slow down. Take longer gaps between alcoholic drinks. And you can obviously use replacement to do that, or you can just slow down. Just go to the bar slightly less often. So replace, space, and pace are all strategies that we can use to just bring our intake down a little bit if that's needed. What if the issue is more severe though, if you're trying to fight alcoholism well those 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 things might help that we've just talked about but also you can add on top of these things um, things like self-help groups counseling so these kinds of therapies can help you identify um, the underlying causes of your excessive alcohol use of your alcoholism they might even help you repair your relationships and develop coping skills and things like that and they can also be either formal or informal you know, the help of friends especially should not be underestimated uh, when you're dealing with things like alcoholism. So be honest with your friends, be honest with your family, ask for help. Those things can be really, really useful in, in starting you in the right direction in fighting alcoholism. And then thirdly and finally, um, residential treatments. It, it may be necessary if the alcoholism is a, a very serious level. It might be that you need to take yourself away for a while and live in a treatment facility um, and, and be treated during the day um, for a period of time. And that, that might last for, say, a month, maybe two or even three months. So there's lots of opportunities, lots of different ways, both um, easy to implement and then more draconian to reduce intake or to fight alcoholism, depending on what's needed. Um, there's lots of different ways to reduce alcohol consumption overall. And by doing so, try and avoid some of those health uh, risks that we've talked about that are associated with excessive alcohol consumption. Well, I hope that's been helpful for you. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification icon so you get notified every time new videos get uploaded. If you have any questions or any queries, put them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Other than that, take care for now. Enjoy the rest of your day.